going to want a WPA project for the troops to f repair and also not only repair it, but bring it into the 21st century. Because anybody that travels out of the United States, they go to Europe and many parts of Asia, we're third world over here, particularly our rail lines. So that would be very different to rebuild our infrastructure instead of the foreign infrastructure, wouldn't it, Gerald? I'm looking when we're preparing for this debate. I'm looking at what these GOP candidates have as their issues on their websites. And I see all of them talking about, oh, we've got a debt problem. That's a favorite topic of the GOP. But then right next to it, because most of them will put these issues in alphabetical order, right next to the debt is defense. It's like, you guys don't see the connection here? Over half of the money that we're spending is on all of these foreign wars that we're starting. You can't balance the budget, Republicans, without getting some kind of a balance in your outlook about what's going on with foreign policy. Stop the foreign entanglements and go back to the original uh, founding father's ideas you just pointed out. Again, and you pointed it out as well. And what you're saying when you put it together, you know, doesn't anybody get it in their head? What, according to Stiglitz in that, that report that he did, we're spending over $6 trillion in just Afghanistan and Iraq. Could you imagine what $6 trillion would do for, for this country, yeah. where we would be at since this war on terror began? And now the, the next element of this, in talking about Congress, is that, as you well know, Congress has not voted to go to war since World War II. Yes, yes. So we're going to demand that Congress vote. We're in Syria now. How could they take this is against the principles of this nation. It's they are traitors. They are traitors to the nation, to the Constitution and to what this country was founded upon. Call them who they are. They are traitors for going into war against Syria without Congress voting for it. And you know, Gerald, it's, it's Congress that has abdicated their power in this area. They could care less. They don't really want to have to have a vote where they have to do up or down. They would like to just say, well, it's the president that did it because the other party can always blame it on him. The Democrats can blame it on George Bush. The Republicans can blame it on Obama. But whether it is war or whether it is treaties or whether it is legislation, they, they push it off to the president. They push it off to the bureaucracies. Congress doesn't do anything anymore. That's why we can't rely on these politicians. That's why we need issue-based movements like what you're doing with Occupy Peace. That's the only way that we're going to get this. And people need to wake up and do something about this before we get into the fight of our life with violence in this country. Because we're not going to escape this. It's going to come to our country sooner than most people realize. And we're going to have to stop these arsonists who are going around the world lighting fires in our name. I agree with you 100 percent. And we're, we're on the exact same page. Yes. And because the next element of it is, again, Congress doesn't represent us. First, you said, you know, they don't want to take responsibility. So the reason, you know, they, so they let the president do what he wants. You know, the reason that they don't do it is because they're a bunch of little lowlife cowards. Mm hmm. And they're disgusting human beings for by and large, except the handful of, that aren't. And so going back to it, because they don't represent us, the congressmen and senators represent the people that give them the most amount of dough. They call it campaign contributions. Adults call it bribes and payoffs. We go to the next element of Occupy Peace is to have on each state ballot a referendum that when Congress is ready to vote for war and we're going to force them to do it, we the people will tell Congress how to vote because we're the ones that pay for the war with our money and our lives. They never send the senator's son. That's all right. these guys, all these little boys and girls that'll be at the, the presidential reality show tonight, they'll all talk tough about war. And who's, which one of them is going to lead the charge? Which one of them is going to tell their sons and daughters to go sign up and, and fight? How about none? But every one of them will shoot off their fat little mouths and talk tough. And there's not a man or a woman among them. There's not a real fighter among them. So that's why we're launching Occupy Peace, to rebuild America. I was on with Ron Paul a couple of days ago, a man I greatly admire, 
Uh, and the, the only person I would have voted for, I've said that in writing and on the air when he, when he was in the race. And we were talking about these issues, about how they're destroying the nation. And no one wants to call it what it is. They are ruining our lives. And the, Congress is not a Congress. That's why Donald Trump could run over them. He knows what little gutless boys they are. This guy's ruthless. Yeah. He, you, he, you go in New York, east side, west side, all around the tra town, Trump, Trump, Trump building here, there, everywhere. <laughs> the guy is a ruthless, driven. He'll, he, these guys are no match for him. So that's what we're looking at. And I'm, we're launching this because we are on the march to war. And this is what I was talking about with Dr. Ron Paul. History is repeating itself. You said the violence is going to be sweeping here. It's a repeat of the 1930s. You yes. had the crash of 1929, the Great Depression, currency wars, trade wars, world war, the panic of 08, the Great Recession, currency wars, is everybody screaming now, trade wars, part and parcel to the currency wars, and now we're seeing the refugees of war sweeping on the shores of Europe. They are leading us to the next great war. All it is going to take is a, quote, terror attack, false flag or real, and people will be tying yellow ribbons around everything that doesn't move, waving American flags, and we're off to what Einstein called the whole war scenario. I don't know how the third world war will be fought, but the fourth will be fought with sticks and stones. Yes, there are horrible weapons that they have at their disposal now. One of those is the propaganda of the media. And that's what we are here to oppose. That's what you're there to oppose with Occupy Peace to try to educate people, to try to coalesce people around this issue to stand up. Again, that website is OccupyPeace.us. We're going to come take a, a quick break, Gerald, and we're going to uh, come back in just a moment. We're going to play a report that Alex did on ISIS as all this news is breaking about the uh, creation of ISIS, how we've been involved in getting... Chechen Muslims who are fighting the Russians. We said, come on, we'll, we'll train you. We'll put you in Syria as our surrogates. That turned into ISIS. But now we have to have a full-on war against ISIS. We have to accept massive uh, immigration into Europe, into the United States because of the humanitarian crisis that we have created. Yet what do we hear from the GOP candidates? We hear simply that, well, Obama should have done more. He should have done it sooner. We would have just had a greater humanitarian crisis earlier than we have it now. That's their only solution. There isn't any sense of the fact that we are going around the world setting fires, creating destruction that is far worse than these horrific wildfires that we're seeing out in California. Again, we're here for the 28-hour money bomb, the InfoWars money bomb. We are trying to get this information out to a larger audience. We're trying to get this up to a satellite broadcasting so it can be carried by terrestrial television. If you want to help us with this goal, many people have stood with us over the years to get us to this point. If you want to help us to get to the next level, you can call in right now at 888-253-3139. We're taking donations. We have some of the members of the Nightly News there right now. Rob Dew, Leanne McAdoo are there taking some of your phone calls. If you want to help us and uh, you want to get a special, we've offered specials to you as well for this special uh, Money Bomb broadcast. We have 20% off of Survival Shield X2, Super Male Vitality, Brain Force, Silver Bullet, we have 15% off of Deep Cleanse, Secret 12, Oxy Powder, free shipping for everything on the store. And, of course, we have 20% off just this hour, 20% off just this hour for Prostagard. We're going to come right back with Gerald Slinty. And, Gerald, I want to uh, have you talk a little bit about what you think might happen with the Federal Reserve. Why are we all waiting in bated breath to see what these private individuals are going to do? Are they going to raise interest rates? Are they going to pull out a pen and bust this Wall Street bubble that they've been blowing up uh, for the last uh, seven years? 
Uh, they meet tomorrow. The Federal Open Market Committee is meeting tomorrow. We'll get Gerald's sense as to whether he thinks they are going to pull the trigger, or I should say uh, push the pen in the bubble. And we're going to talk to him more about OccupyPeace.us. But first, the special report, Killing ISIS. <laughs> This is the new face of evil. This is what nightmares are made of. Ruthless, cold-blooded killers on a mission to wage war, to annihilate millions of people. We are their enemy, and they will stop at nothing to destroy us. All measures should be taken in our defense, that always will we remember the character of the onslaught against us. I think it's impossible to say that the Syrian rebels are not associated with Al-Qaeda. So there is a great irony that you will be arming forces that a, a normal common sense use of the word associated can say that these people are associated with Al-Qaeda. But you watch in typical NATO US false flag fashion, the Assad regime is going to be blamed or accused of using chemical weapons against the so-called rebels. There's a global crime syndicate that controls NATO and the major Western governments, and it is using Al Qaeda to overthrow secular governments. Breaking news now from the war in Syria, and this could be significant. Reports that chemical weapons have been used in that conflict. These are some of the scenes now circulating on the internet of distressed children apparently suffering the after effects of a chemical attack. Some of the video footage is too distressing to broadcast, and it is unverified. But there are scores of dead, among them very young children. Good afternoon, everybody. Ten days ago, the world watched in horror as men, women, and children were massacred in Syria in the worst chemical weapons attack of the 21st century. The Assad regime, and only undeniably the Assad regime, unleashed an outrageous chemical attack against its own citizens. Now, after, after careful, careful deliberation, deliberation, I have decided, decided that, that the United, United States, States should, should take military, military action, action against Syrian regime targets. We can tell you beyond any reasonable doubt that our evidence proves the Assad regime prepared for this attack. I've watched debates in Congress. A congressman asked Mr. Kerry, is there Al-Qaeda? People say they've gotten stronger. He says, no, I say officially, they aren't there. The main combat unit, the so-called Al-Nursa, is a unit of Al-Qaeda. They know about this. It was not pleasant for me to see this. Well, we communicate with them and assume that they are decent people. He lies openly and he knows that he lies. We're not really positive who uh, who set off the gas. I mean, the, per the group that's most likely to benefit from that is Al-Qaeda. 
Did President Bashir Assad gas his own people? Not according to a growing number of skeptics, including